everyone, I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead, it's a matchup of all pro inside linebackers from 2016, as we'll see Bobby Wagner and Sean Lee. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. A moment ago, the Cowboys introduced to this gigantic crowd, and as usual, it was old number 88, Des Bryant, that got the folks going the loudest. His guys are set to go head-to-head -head with the Seattle Seahawks. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person, big unit against big unit. Meat on me. Oh, you got it all. Pick your cliche. But we know this. The ground's going to shake, things are going to rumble, and they're going to have an impact on today's game. Dan Bailey's got it teed up, and here we go now from Arlington at AT&T Stadium. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. So the Seattle Seahawks at 8-5 and five right now, lost last week to Jacksonville. Russell Wilson and company taking the field. It was a, a struggle of a game last week for Russell Charles. Three interceptions a season high. Yeah, and that ended up creating a heck of a margin for them. You know, it's a, a comeback that they had to make and a big hill to climb. And he did what he normally does, right? He gets hot in the fourth quarter, back-to-back -back touchdown passes, almost got there, didn't get over the hump. But what a season he's having. When the fourth quarter lights come on, he's there, 17 fourth quarter touchdown passes this year. That's the most in one year in NFL history. The former Gamecock here. This is Mike Davis. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, could be a long night defensively no doubt about it because when they are in sync as we're seeing so far with that continuity is there and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers you're exactly right it could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage and a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground They go again with Davis. He takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. And this offense often hinges on one of the best tight ends in the league, and that's Jimmy Graham. I think he made up for lost time when he got to the NFL because in college, he was mainly a basketball player, a defender who couldn't score. Now he's flipped it around in the NFL. Every time he touches the ball, he's a threat to score. Second down, Wilson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And now the defense for Dallas. I think most people locked in on Byron Jones when he came out of UConn at the NFL Combine where he darn near jumped out of the stadium because of his vertical leap. But there's so much more to his game than that. Played cornerback and safety in college. And they can use that same ability to move them around in the NFL in order to create great matchups on defense for Dallas. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. From the gun, it's Wilson. And he's got room. Oh, Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And the Cowboys have recovered. 
often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Come the Cowboys. Inside the 30. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh shut of downs. And the offense lining up first and 10. Play fake here on first down. He hits Beasley right side. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Face mask. Defense. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment, defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you can see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. Got now on second down. Yeah, he's got it. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. 
How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. And they're knocking on the door as they come to the line here on third and goal from the one. Now Prescott. And Dez has got it. Dez Bryant for the Cowboy touchdown. Dez Bryant from a yard out. And the Cowboys have taken the early lead. And the QB rating right now is sky high. Four for four on that opening drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass. Yeah, I don't know quite how to figure it out. I think I need my friends from MIT to come in and help me. <laughs> but I think 158.3 is the number one. Yep, that's the right? high That's mark. the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. And this is up and good to make it 7-0 Cowboys. Five plays there on that drive. And it's capped off for the Cowboys touchdown. kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense. And last time not only the turnover but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, punt the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Yeah, nice yardage right off the bat here as he's up to about the 24-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Here's Davis now, and not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football, but these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I will hear about that from him soon. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, the free safety was there, no gain. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. 
And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Fresh set of downs here. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. And here comes play number six on this drive. On second down, here's Wilson. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. The throw is Wilson. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Mm, close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. And his throw here is incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and it's third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying, no more. We're taking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Throwing again here. Wilson. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So on fourth down, Pete Carroll's going to call out his field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 37. And that hits off the left upright, and it caroms away no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So he had a chance to get him on the board there, but unfortunately that big yellow metallic structure in the back of the end zone, it had other plans. And that's when we're kickers watching it the whole way saying, oh no, don't hit it, rats. Now Dak Prescott of the offense heading back onto the field. And he had the touchdown on the last drive also, four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. They begin the drive with Morris. 
And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats, but really should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. the 27-yard line. Two yards gets him back to where they started, but now third and 10. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On third down. It's Smith, and he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Well, that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. Now the seventh-year man, Chris Jones, on to kick. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. Returnable for Lockett. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Now Wilson on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin. And now it's second down. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. Second down following the incompletion. Davis and running room scarce here he's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage calling no gain on the run there and now they'll be looking at a third down so nothing there but maybe you blame that on the blocking yeah some point you've got to win at the point of attack and on that play that was all the defense they made it happen and the Seahawks on third down just one for three thus far this is third and ten Play action. Now Wilson. And that is incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Taken in at the 22. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. Then they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Four down, four down, four down. 
They go play action here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. K.J. Wright coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter, and it's been a quarter dominated by the guys with the football. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That one good for 12 yards. And they're going to face a third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, but screams what? Throw the football. you got to pass in order to try to pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. Meanwhile, we will not get another play as time will run out on this first quarter. The Cowboys out in front early. We'll return after this message. You're watching the NFL, and it's right here on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Sitting alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, as it is Cowboy football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a third and six here to start things out. one he definitely normally catches fourth down timing is crucial in any route thrown but when you throw an out so many things are going through the mind of the receiver catching the ball timing it up with the quarterback are my feet going to get down inbounds on that play all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it out now comes the Cowboys punter on for his second punt, he'd take a repeat of his first. <laughs> Spins past it. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. the 30-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. This is not a gimme for the offense. They've got to figure out what they want to do. Do they challenge their offensive line and try and run it? Or do they go ahead and concede that this is a tough defense and put it in the air? On 
on third down. That's Davis. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. Here's John Ryan now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Taking it about the 16. So possession goes over here on the punt, and possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Prescott to throw it. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves to James. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. He's brought down right around the 42. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. A second down throw for Prescott. And Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. They'll need a big play here. Will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack? It's third and long. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 
And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And time for us to spotlight Doug Baldwin. A chance maybe here for them to get him more involved. They're down here on the scoreboard, and he's been very quiet. And the silence has been deafening for his team. They don't need that at all. They need fireworks. They need explosive plays. They need him touching the football in any way possible. Maybe go to some jet sweeps. Anything to get him going. Yeah, something to get him the ball. We'll see if they can do it. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone fraction defense. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. He's got Wilson, middle of the field. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. and 10. It's Wilson. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Demarcus Lawrence able to get in there and drop him for a two-yard loss. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He lost two there, and it's third down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Couple of plays sent him the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. From the shotgun, Wilson. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. He'll look to set up his blockers. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And our focus shifts here to Alfred Morris. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series for those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. Right. 
They'll start it on the ground with Morris. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Morris. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Prescott from the gun on third. Pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Mike Bennett able to drop him for a loss of two, and that'll bring up fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. He's been terrific so far. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Seahawks. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. one across the 30-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, we have a second. I want to revisit our MVP discussion that we've had the last couple of weeks because obviously Carson Wentz was a candidate, but he goes down with a knee injury, so 13 games on his resume. Not that he's worried about this, but for our sake, is he still a candidate for MVP? I think that he still is, but now he's almost at the mercy of what happens around him. And what I mean by that is 13 games is enough. There's plenty of body of work there. But if Tom Brady continues to go off and New England goes in as the number one seed in the playoffs, you know, that, that bolsters his case, of course. Antonio Brown from the Pittsburgh Steelers, a wide receiver, starting to get a lot of buzz now as being an MVP candidate. Russell Wilson's hit, you know, his chances took a little bit of a hit last week in the loss to Jacksonville. But what might help Wentz more than anything, partner, is if Philadelphia loses some games now without it. Mm, yeah. That shows just how valuable he is. They don't want it. He doesn't want it. 
but that may demonstrate his MVP qualities. But Antonio Brown creeping in over 1,500 yards, nine touchdowns. They go play action with Wilson. They find some open field here. And brought down, but the juke, the very nice juke, gives him the first down yardage there. To give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. They go play action now. Wilson. Room here. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. So here we go, first and ten now. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. A reminder coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. So the offense has it first and 10. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. It's complete to lock it. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. zone now. Here's Wilson on first down. This will be caught just inside the 10. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Seven yards the pick up on the pitch and catch. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing and they got it done. Now Wilson on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Wilson will throw again. And he's got it. 
Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Mike Davis from six yards away. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it. Blair Walsh on to attempt the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Prescott on first down. And some space here. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Second down and just one. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time. And it's third and short. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Cowboys on third down. Just one for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Prescott. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. 
The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Try the right side here. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we send you on over to Orlando where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Both the Cowboys and the Seahawks have not had the best success throwing the football. It's a passing league, but these defenses have mostly been able to contain that today. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now following the fumble, Prescott going to connect here with pick number 88, Des Bryant. And this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. The Cowboys strike first in this one. Cowboys on second and seven. Thomas is able to zero in on the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Now to late in the first half. Wilson's going to find his mark, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. We're tied back up at seven. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to Arlington for the start of the second half. Okay, thank you, Larry. A low-scoring affair all even as we ready for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Out come the Cowboys now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Here's a handoff to begin the drive to Morris. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Play fake. Here's Prescott. And he's got some space here. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks.
First down and 10 now for the offensive group. This is Morris. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Second down following the run. They run with Morris, and he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. And the offense lining up first and ten. Prescott now from the 50. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Give him three on the play, and it'll be a second down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. The Cowboys on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and four. Prescott now. He's got his man, it's Williams. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. It's an eight yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts it towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Here's Morris. <laughs> fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Eight yards to go here on second down. A handoff as they run the counter play. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Four yards on the pick up there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Now Prescott. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he is going to feel that one. Knocked down hard. They give him 12 yards and a first down. Oh. 
Apple's long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. offense. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. Try to throw now. Prescott. It's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. Only two yards on the completion at second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target. Guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Prescott now on second down. And an alley to run. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll lead here to a third down. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This will be third and six. Here's Prescott. And this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So they get the field goal, but part of that was a 14-play drive to get the three. Normally, when you hold the ball that long, run that many plays, you end up in the end zone. There's a breakdown on the defense. Something happens. In this case, that didn't. But really good ball control by the offense. They're hoping that they can wear them down if they keep having drives like that. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. Ooh, and a juke. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now, we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. That's what I love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. First down, Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. A gain of six there on first. 
Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. So the offense readies for a second and four. From the gun, it's Wilson. And left side here, it's Graham. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A Seahawk first down, Wilson to his big target, Graham. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. False start offense. So that one will be accepted. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. A handoff as they run the counter play. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. Second down, Wilson. It's caught, lock it. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Fresh set of downs here. Here's Wilson. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Wasn't a ton of space, but a great move. He's able to work it to the 20-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and it'll make it second down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. And the Seahawks on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and four. Now Wilson. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He loses four, and it brings up four. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. 
read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Right hash mark of 42 yard attempt. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And that will knot us up at 10. So they come away from this opening drive of the third quarter with only three, but at least it does draw them back level. And that has to be job one. A touchdown certainly would have been nice, but here you get back on even terms, and now you get the rest of the second half to try and get yourselves in front. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out now joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. First down, Prescott. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him out in man-to-man -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Now Prescott. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Prescott to throw it. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Tight, 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. They go read option with Wilson. He can run for it, and he will. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. Five yards that time, taking it himself, and he has enough for the first. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll run it now out of the gun. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. <laughs> and what a big time play there. Now a handoff looking right. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. From the gun on third down, Wilson avoids him at the five. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. set of downs and they're at the one first and goal out of the gun here's Wilson and he's gonna score it's a Seahawk touchdown Russell Wilson his second touchdown of the night and the Seahawks are gonna take the lead this is similar to baseball, where you walk the leadoff hitter and you don't expect him to come around and score. Almost impossible. Anytime a defense has to defend a short field, you usually end up seeing the result we saw, giving up points. Walsh now for the PAT. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. 
And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. You know, they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. A first down throw for Prescott. Looking left sideline, incomplete. He was looking for Alfred Morris that time. And that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. On second down, Prescott again. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that's going to lead to a third down. The Cowboys on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. now set to come back out on the field and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone and just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive when you score points it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there looks like the defense in press coverage here Now Wilson on first down. Complete. Richardson has it. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. From the shotgun, Wilson. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. A good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. 
That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And just like that, it's third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. On third down, Wilson. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's John Ryan now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Scott on first down. He dumps off to Morris. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. It's a gain of six on the play, and it's a second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. A second down throw for Prescott. Right side complete to Butler. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Scott looks to throw on first. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. Play fake. Here's Prescott. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Cowboys on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and ten. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment. Defense. 
And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. The Cowboys on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This will be third and five. To the air again, Prescott. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Frank Clark in there to drop him for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. some space up to about the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lent up. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, huh. nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> and after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. A handoff as they run the counter play. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on, because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section what running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's gonna lead to a third down. Now that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking it the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? And he'll give it here to his running back. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, 
I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Try the right side here. And he's brought down. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. And now, following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. stopped up quickly here at the 38 and now we're going to get a timeout defensively so another stop 150 left in the football game the defense they got a little bit of a breather now they're back and set as we resume play Second down, nine yards to go. Now a handoff here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Wilson to throw. He finds his man, Baldwin. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they got the yardage they needed there, picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understand where they are in the field? So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. 
Wilson wants to throw it. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Tyrone Crawford in there to sack him for a loss of six. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. But, Brandon, this is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Now Wilson. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes. That's exactly both. what you do. It's both <laughs> because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So barring something extraordinary, something crazy here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Brandon, this will be a great win for him. The better team's going to win this game, no question about it. After the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. throw deep downfield and this will be incomplete one second left to go well this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight another example right there on the deep ball sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium there's a little extra spring in their step doesn't it and that's what we're seeing from the defenders doesn't matter with his man or zone deep ball short ball that was a deep one there they're making plays on the football contesting everything So second and ten here. I got left. I got left. Three, three, go. Four, eight. Eight. One last shot now for Prescott. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Well, Charles, it's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra special, isn't it? It is because, let's face it, in most cases, you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling.
So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Good night, everybody.